Welcome, everybody, to the podcast. Very unique. (laughs) You could be the next SNL guy. You think? (laughs) No, that wasn't very good. I don't think. It was a little weird. The SNL guy was weird. I don't know who the new guy... The new guy's just a regular voice. Hey, welcome to SNL. (laughs) No, really? Well, it's nothing... I I don't remember the guy's name, but it's nothing like that. You know, uh, Will Ferrell! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? It's not that guy anymore. He died or something? (laughs) I don't know. Maybe. I mean... uh, I guess you could do that until you die, yeah. You're right. Like, why would you ever retire from that job? I don't know. You just read names. Well, good. <laughs> yeah. Was I looking at you weird? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> no, I just like steamed this and was anyway, buttoning it up. Yeah. Shit. I just watched a video today where a chick does something like that. And I'm like, shut up. And I clicked away. And now really? I'm doing it. <laughs> Whoa. She was talking about her steamed shirt. It was like a Star Wars discussion or something like that, like a Zoom call. You know, a lot of these YouTube videos are like that. But this chick was like, (laughs) oh, my God, you guys caught me. I got too much bronzer on. Like, what is that? I was like, moving on. Fuck you. Fuck you. We do not mention the bronzer we wear on this show. (laughs) Not even once. I'm I definitely have a shorter attention span in this new Internet age. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Like as soon as someone annoys me a little bit, I'm moving out. Ah, you're out of there. Yeah, I remember in the '90s growing up, I would watch a Zoom call for hours. <laughs> I would watch TV for hours. And it would yes. seem like an, not enough time. It's true. Although cartoons kind of had short segments all the, always. Cartoons did have short segments, but I watched everything. I watched Star Trek. I watched Frasier. My parents told me when I was a toddler, I watched golf. Really? And they thought it was weird, but they were happy about it because I was like a well-behaved kid who's just watching like golf balls fly through the air. <laughs> you specifically like golf. Or... They would just put golf on and you, you'd be transfixed. Or you, would you put it on yourself? It probably happened once. And my mom probably is like, oh, yeah, he's just I'll, always loved golf. I'm yeah. trying not to. I like to hold this, but. I know. I like as to Cornell hold it has too. pointed out. And as my own ears have pointed out, it really fucks with the audio. <laughs> They're not ears. Remember, they're called sound sniffers. <laughs> That's right. Sound sniffers. You're an expert with the, your mic technique because you're a stand up. Hold your ears, folks. Hold on. Well, I'm just putting it up to my face and then I'm sitting. It is making me use good posture, which is good. <laughs> yeah. And I put my thumbs into my, my belt like I'm okay. a cowboy. I, I had it, partner. This, <laughs> this is not right. <laughs> what do you me. mean? It's not right for you? No, but what? now I now I'm super let's see. What's the best? <sighs> so Cornell. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That was cool. Uh if you guys aren't Dude, watching that's this. That's my on impression video. of that fucking guy. Sorry, I was on set the other day and this guy was like, What do you think of Andrew Schultz? He's a podcaster. I can't stand that dude, but it's it's just because of his energy. I don't know anything else about him, but I can't listen or see a just guy. Just the aura around him that you see? No, 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 no. Whoa. What are you doing? Whoa. <laughs> that was, I think that I would come It's a good impression, right? Oh, no, you're saying I should act like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was really good. I was no, transfixed. Dude, it's insane. I can't even articulate it without saying he's a spaz, <laughs> basically. So he acts like he's too much. He's, he's he Kramer. He too hard. He's Kramer. But, I would but he's like a white hip-hop talking. He's just lame in every aspect. I don't know. 
I don't like his high energy. I think high energy would be good for us, Logan, don't you think? It would be good for our podcast if we were a little bit more jazzed up and high energy. That's why you got the bang. Oh, wait, that's alcohol. I got, I, it's Friday, so I'm relaxing with the latest mistake I got at Grocery Outlet. <laughs> bang Mix Hard Seltzer. No caffeine. Don't worry. They, they are tired. See, caffeine-free. They're tired of turning you up. And now they're in the business of taking it down a notch. So you think you had too much energy yes. on this show, but I need to crank it up. Yes. Well, I'm really exhausted from my impression of Andrew <laughs> Schultz, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got this bang hard seltzer at Grocery Outlet. I love Grocery Outlet. Do you go there ever? No. Grocery outlet, bargain market. That's the same thing. Grocery outlet, bargain market. No, I've never even heard of that, which is weird. It's a grocery store where they just sell weird shit for cheap. Hmm. So like they had a blueberry Moscato wine, you know, blue wine. They had bang energy drink or bang hard seltzer. No, none of the bang energy drinks. They had jelly belly. Bubbling water. What do you think about yeah. that? Jelly belly sparkling water. What do you think about that? Did you Logan? try it? Oh, yeah. I mean, it sounds syrupy. No, it's a soda water. It's like a LaCroix. Oh, but a flavor with a flavor, you know? So just a tinge. It's like of... a bang. Right. All these bangs don't have a tinge. Yeah, but jelly of beans are so like sugary. So. Yeah, I would think it would be like a, a Kool Aid more than a. But like uh, you know, Lacroix like has that. like a a cherry blossom flavor. But it's super light and a guava flavor. Yes, and that's how the Jelly Belly is. But if you're making a Jelly Belly hard, no, no, soft seltzer, Jelly Belly regular <laughs> seltzer. What Jelly Belly are you choosing? Plain you're water, not, not even, <laughs> sparkling water. You're not even listening to my fucking question, Logan. <laughs> <laughs> Cherry, I guess. You would pick a plain sparkling water jelly bean? What the fuck are you talking about? You know they make it at Jelly Belly. They make every flavor. I've been to the goddamn <laughs> factory, okay? In Buellton. Ever heard of it? <laughs> no. Built in what state? Or California. Oh. Up by the Bay, around the Bay Area. It's uh, around Sacramento, Bay Area, around there, in the middle of nowhere. Jelly Belly Factory. I've toured the floors. So they don't even make a uh, seltzer water flavor? Plain seltzer water <laughs> flavor jelly bean? Yeah, and then I could get the seltzer water... <laughs> Flavor of the jelly bean that's flavored like seltzer. <laughs> they make every flavor. You would pick cherry? Yeah. Is that your favorite jelly belly? I don't like jelly beans. <laughs> <laughs> I love your reactions. When I <laughs> oh my God. But I don't like shit that it's like. Jelly bellies? Everyone likes jelly belly. I don't like jelly beans. I like nah, jelly this bellies. Is See, this is where I was talking to somebody the other day where it's like, I'm like, I'm fine with capitalism, but some of it is fucking goofy as hell. And Jelly Bill is a perfect example of like goofy fucking, it's just marketing. It's the shitty, it's a shitty no. jelly bean made out of corn. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Everything you just said you, You're is nostalgic wrong. for a shit product that you're no paying way. too much for. No that I, has no cherries in the cherry flavor, for all I know. <laughs> How would they fit a cherry into a jelly bean? You're just being <laughs> stupid now. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, they would mash it up, and part of <laughs> some cherry would end up in there if it was natural. I don't think you know what jelly beans are. You think they're flavored like regular mineral water, and you want <laughs> fruit in them. Okay. And they're legumes, right? They grow under the ground like beans. Jelly Belly 
is completely different. This is not even in the same world as Jelly Bean. There's Jelly Bellies. There's Starburst Jelly Beans. And then there, everything else is trash. Oh, my God. It's just facts. No, man. No. If I gave you a Jelly Belly and then I gave you a generic fucking... It's Easter. We can find those easy. Easter's I would support... Top- the small business. There is no small business. The small jelly, jelly bean. bean business. Big jelly bean, dude. You're a big belly jelly bean shill. I am. You I are. Am You're selling it so hard. Well, sometimes it's the biggest for a reason, okay? <laughs> jelly belly is better than all other jelly beans. Cornell has a gun at, aimed at me under the table. <laughs> if I Easter. Help me. It's around Easter time. Easter is the top holiday for shit jelly beans. This is where shitty jelly beans thrive. The story of Jesus Christ was created by the card company, you know. Yes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yes. But then the candy the candy company. If I took a jelly belly and I took a regular jelly bean, same flavor. And Shook them up, and you ate one after the other. One would taste like corn syrup, and that would be the Jelly Belly. Oh, the other one, what would that taste like, genius? Like cane, pure cane sugar <laughs> uh-uh. with some fruit in it. And it would, no, no it'd be fruit so great. in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you would, guaranteed, <laughs> you would like the Jelly be- Belly better. There's no way. There's not even. It's not even a question. Jelly Belly's so much better. Nah, people just reinforce each other. Just like, oh yeah, dude, Jelly Bellies are the best. They're oh, they're candy. I'll eat it, but it's like, it's fun. <laughs> I'm not saying it's my favorite candy, but they're much. They're much better than any jelly bean out there. There's a noticeable difference in quality. I mean, I can't name other jelly bean brands, but I've had like. From a candy store, like a non-branded jelly bean. It probably was a jelly belly. No, they all have the logo on them. All the jelly bellies. Another fucking cartoonish. I guess all candies do that. But, you know, it's. I don't know. <laughs> I love that you take jelly bellies too, too <laughs> stupid and silly and cartoonish for you. You want a serious <laughs> jelly bean. <laughs> Man's yeah. de- devour jelly beans. I want Tegrity Farms jelly bean. <laughs> You know, like those uh, de- devour frozen foods for men. They make like the. <laughs> yeah, it's like fucking silly shit. You could buy all that shit That's and cook it yourself and it's cheaper and, and high quality. Right. I don't know. I know, but devour. There's a company that makes the UFC frozen pizza. Have you seen wow, that? I buy that because it's really good. No, <laughs> I haven't seen that. They have it. It's in an octagon. Because they fight in an octagon, so they made the pizza the shape of an octagon. It's pretty genius. That part I'm down with. I like that. You got to make it an makes, octagon. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that makes sense, actually. <laughs> yeah. Wait, is an octagon what it a stop your colon sign is? tap out. Two, three, four. Yes. No, that's a hexagon. No. No, that's an octagon. It's got the flat oh, sides. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, I guess you could stack them more easily, actually, but that's probably not true. Well, they're in a box. I mean, the boxes would be octagons, right? No. And you could put it like a honeycomb, but those are hexagons. (laughs) (laughs) So never mind. (laughs) And you could put real fruit in it, too, huh, Logan? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Pizzas Uh, have tomatoes in them. Look, back to what I was saying. Jelly Belly, Juicy Pear. It was delicious. Juicy pear is the best jelly belly, and the soda water that's flavored as juicy pear was fantastic. Cool. Then I got another one that was supposed to be good, and it was terrible. Should I put the fish here and always have the fish here? Yes. In the middle? <laughs> yes. We should have started with him there, right? Of course. All right. I'm going to go grab him. I felt like we were missing a co host. <laughs> Gosh, I blocked in. Oh, okay. Come on through. I cannot believe that, Logan, you 
does not like Jelly Bellies. That is one of the craziest takes I've ever heard. You have to have no sense, style, self-respect, <laughs> taste buds, maybe a tongue at all, um, to not notice the dip in quality from a regular jelly bean after you're eating a jelly belly. I filled it with some water to hide the ring at the top to make it look better, but now there's shit floating in there. Everybody's going to think I don't take... I need to change the water. <laughs> well, why don't you just say it was like confetti and that he just had a party? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's confetti and he just had a party. <laughs> oh, cool. It's not too late to say that, right? <laughs> no, no, perfect timing. Carl in the house. What up, Carl? Well, when you came in, you said that your room was messy, and now we know Carl's room is messy, too. It mirrors your room. You guys I've been intending all week to change the water so that he could be on screen here and look nice. But you, Well, you would have cleaned up your place, but you were too busy at the confetti party at Carl's. Right. Hanging out there all night. Yep. Yeah, and then you guys both are having a rough, <laughs> lazy, hungover Friday. I oh, get man. it. Anyway, Grocery Outlet uh, is has a bunch of other great stuff. Good stuff, bad stuff, weird stuff, just like crazy shit. What's like the best discovery you've made there? Um, last time I was there when I bought the Bang Hard Seltzers, which um, are not the best discovery I've had there. Um, let me just talk about these for a second. There's four flavors. That came in this 12 pack. I bought this a week ago and I no two weeks ago and I have five left. That's how good they are. <laughs> I was just going to say, did you bring, are those both for you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. You can have it. You well, can have it. I'll share. Are you sure? I feel bad. No, it's greedy of me to drink them both. So I'll share with my friend that one. Well, I'm kind of protecting you from drinking and driving, actually. So. That was, I'm a hero. <laughs> I was going to crash here tonight. I was oh. going to crash at Carl's. <laughs> um, that one is called Purple Kittles. Yeah, it does. It tastes like Skittles. Which... That one to me tastes exactly like those. Remember those smelly markers? Right. Tastes exactly like the smelly markers smell. Artificial grape. Yes. There's some f- weird flavoring that is in everything artificial grape. Which, speaking of a goofy company marketing shtick, how about that one? You didn't. That one doesn't piss you off, the smelly <laughs> pens? <laughs> Dude, I'm going to drive you nuts with my opinions. I love the taste of artificial grape. <laughs> it's like the <laughs> most artificial taste ever. That one's like super artificial. My this s- one's a little bit too much. My for, sis- like, yeah, that's all the flavors are like that. My sister, give her credit, she said that her... That flavor to her tasted like a uh, also a ground up uh, Flintstone vitamin. Like someone made a Flintstone vitamin into a pay, into a drink. Flintstone vitamin seltzer. Yeah, Flintstone vitamins, uh, Kool Aid, uh, popsicles. Yeah, and purple uh, grape flavored like bubble gum. But that's bubble a better. Gum. That's a better. Those are all like the actual food things you're mentioning and like and the grape Kool-Aid. Those all taste better than that, I think. Yeah, this has too much flavoring. It's it needs to be diluted. It's insane. And there's no sugar in it. I mean, the alcohol is made out of oh, sugar. Really? The alcohol is made out of sugar, but there's still no sugar in it. And um, I guess the yeast, hmm. <laughs> the yeast eats up the sugar to turn it into alcohol and poops out alcohol. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I just watched a video. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. But it really coats cuts. your tongue. What, what was the video you watched? It now, maybe I misinterpreted this little clip, but it was another uh, David Attenborough clip, nature documentary clip. And uh, it was about, have you seen, you know what parrot fish are, right? They've got the beaks. Yes. They're kind of ugly. Sort of, yeah. They're unique looking, and they have those beaks because they chew on, like, rocks. Right. But also coral and stuff. Right. And they shit sand. And over time, that sand builds up. And now, 
eventually islands form and all the sand on the beach on the beaches that you enjoy that soft beautiful sand is this their shit over millions of years i've no never heard of that way maybe no that way. contributes to it, it that contributes can't, it's to gotta it. be how he made the way out? the way it was cut made it seem like it's all it all came from their ass. <laughs> yeah, but how the white sands of Florida, the, the sands over here. I, that would mean erosion has to go through parrotfish to become sand. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, how I guess I don't really know where sand comes from anyway. I mean, I guess it's every. It's part of. It's got to be a little bit of everything. Yeah. Because if you look at it in a microscope, it's like pieces of shells, too. Yeah, it's rocks and shells and everything just breaking down into sand in the water and stuff. Um, but how would parrotfish poop on the part that's out of the water? Well, the tide brings <laughs> it in. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. It, the part that's out of the water... Yeah, you're right, because the only way that makes sense is that every continent arose from the shit from these <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I don't think that that doesn't track. Um, I guess yeah, the explanation is tectonic, the tide brings it in. Tectonic plates. But the, he did say islands form just from that. <laughs> and then the birds bring in like more nutrients with their shit. Right. He re I mean, oh, he's a fecal lover. <laughs> it was yeah, it was fecal file. <laughs> so the great thing I got at grocery outlet, Hooters whiskey. It it was surprisingly good. It was and it had Hooters on the like a female's Hooters on the No, label? just the owl logo from the restaurant Hooters. Oh. <laughs> I wish. Trust me, I wish. Ten dollars for a bottle of Hooters whiskey, and I just drank it, and I was like, "Wow, this is so smooth." <laughs> um, I was like, "This is even as like." As soon as I get out of this gutter, <laughs> I'm gonna buy another one. I was, I was literally like, "This, I think this is smoother than Jameson when I was drinking it." It was right after I drank a bang hard seltzer, though. <laughs> it did come after I drank a bang mixed drink. So maybe my taste buds were a little. I probably wouldn't have even respected a jelly belly had I chewed on one right afterwards because the bang mix like really envelops the palate and gives you the taste of Logan. <laughs> yeah, it really it really does. I mean, it's not only strong, but it does coat your tongue, like you said. So it's like it does. <laughs> it reminds me when Homer a, drank the candle wax. I was about to say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he ate the crazy pepper for you youngsters who aren't familiar. God, um, that was the best show at that time. It still kind of pisses me off that you don't think Jelly Bellies are any better. You think it's all marketing. Yeah, well, the pear one is okay, but it's like. But even you said it's not your favorite candy. Like, it's not that good. The pear one is okay, but, like, all the other flavors, there's just a lot of flavors. It's fun to look at colors in a booklet. Look at all these flavors Jelly Belly makes. I mean, it's all hype. But it the, is all hype. But I the flavors are that. good. No. What's another good flavor other than pear? Cinnamon. Ew. No, I disagree. Yeah? You disagree? I don't want a cinnamon jelly bean Ooh, or I Jelly Belly. <laughs> You're like, oh, the <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> I love it. I love a cinnamon jelly belly. I'm a fireball freak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's kind of spicy. Yeah, it is kind of spicy. But it is. I'm not a fireball freak. I was just trying to impress you guys. And I should be honest. Should you got to keep honest. it real. I on know. the Strip Tease podcast, we're stripping it down for everybody. I know. I will drink Fireball, but I'm not a Fireball freak. Hooters has a fire a cinnamon whiskey, too, for sale. And they had two different tequilas and a rum, all at Grocery Outlet. So was that really the best product you discovered over there? The uh, Hooters whiskey, that is? It's the best one I can think of in recent memory. Oh no! Actually, the actual best, the most, the the most delicious thing that I've gotten from there, I've been two different hot sauces. I got a Korean gochu 
Jang, Goku Jang <laughs> sauce. It's like a chili sauce. It's got like a flavor, almost like a little mole-esque or something like that going on. And then I got Old Bay seasoning. You know that stuff? Old Bay? I assume it has bay leaves in it. I don't know. I, no, I've never heard of it. It's like a celery salt, that's for sure. I think it's a popular on the East Coast, like a Maryland thing. They put it on their blue crab, if uh-huh. I'm not mistaken. I got an Old Bay hot sauce, which is really good. Interesting. So is that is it a chain or is there just one over in Highland Park or whatever? Oops. Grocery outlet? <laughs> I gotta stop saying. That's right. Yeah. There's a bunch of Highland Parks. The, in Dallas. Exactly. <laughs> there are a bunch of grocery outlets. Look it up, guys. Google it. I used to, oh anyway. Yeah, I'm surprised I feel like I know every grocery store in this area. <laughs> but I never there heard of it. There probably is one close to you. There's got to be. I'm excited. I right got here in downtown Dallas. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm excited about this one, but it's like there's only one. And it's right here. It's too many clues. This guy Ooh. asked me. <laughs> oh, by the way, the big secret casting I did that I wasn't supposed to talk about, it's out now. Do you know what it is? I think I showed you. Yes. I'm on Mandalorian. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Yeah. And uh, a random person already through my website reached out to me for an autograph. Because, <laughs> I mean, he just probably collects, he probably keeps track of everything and collects every autograph. Wow. But what, did you give it to him? He asked me for my agency's address, and I just gave him my address. I should have given him NPS's address, maybe, but I don't know. I just gave him my address. I was like, eh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully he's not gonna stalk me. <laughs> uh, yeah! Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> he's a stranger. But can you talk about your role that in the Mandalorian? I'm a ticket taking droid in episode three of season three. I mean, I'm just I can say what's public info, I guess. You can't say like what scene is, you can. Yeah, I'm the ticket droid. They run into a in the scenes with the doctor. La la la, no spoilers. La la la. Have you seen it yet? No, I haven't, but that's okay. We're ticket taking droids on a train. Yeah, so I don't I don't really want to spoil it either. You won't But recognize... I, it was motion capture. Right. Yeah, you won't see me. But it was a lot of fun. I got to be on the set and I also stood in for Dr. Pershing for a scene in the volume where he overlooks a cliff looking at a ship and it is amazing (laughs) yeah and it's out now and i don't think i gave away any plot points really so cool it's very cool you look it's not logan in silver face paint going meep boop mop although i wish it was and i don't have a line even though someone recorded a line over me oh really ticket plays but it was not me (laughs) Uh, you could have done that you could have killed that line they've done that to me many times on different shows Doctor, there's a show where I'm walking away from camera. I'm supposed to say congratulations to a lawyer, and I do that, you know, on the day. And then when it airs, it's someone else's voice. So I'm like, doing this, like, hey, exactly. That was the voice I was gonna do too, because it is like that. It's like, hey, good job. (laughs) It was in OJ, the chick, the public, or the prosecutor. It was OJ, the OJ Simpson. Mini series that had uh, what's his name? David Schwimmer. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At one point, the prosecutor did a good job at, on something, and she's walking through the halls, and everybody's like, "Good job." Well, you'll see the back of my head, and you'll hear some guy's voice be like, "Hey, you did good out there." <laughs> and she's like, "Ah, oh, thank you." <laughs> what did you say? What's up, baby? You yeah, fucking so- rocked it, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I said something i mean i they just repeated what i said but they yeah i don't know the logic or it somehow cost them less to do that right 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 but yeah anyway just wanted to brag real quick very cool it's very cool to see you get motion captured and go on that set and stuff it's awesome he also you filled in for dr who fauci 
during no, uh, the Dr. Pershing, Dr. Pershing is a character, and there was a scene. Well, Fauci's was... a character, too, believe me. Have oh, you boy. been watching the news? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, not to get into that, but... Uh, I just yeah. say a character. It's not leading you anywhere. Okay. Get, you're going to set me off. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, no, but stand-in means they rehearse the scene before the actor steps in. Like, he's off memorizing lines or preparing, and I'm in his place going through the motions to help the cameras find their place. I did that for a day because his normal stand-in was sick. That's it. I'm actually taller than him, so I only did it for that day. <laughs> that sucks, but... Meh. By the way, I forgot to tell us today's comic strip factoid. Oh, Cool. I had something I was going to say, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is about BC, the comic strip BC. Okay. Yes. It, it's a quick one. Uh, the guy. <sighs> First of all, this is info on mental floss by Jake Rawson. Thank 2018. You Jake. Shout out to uh, Jake. This is about Johnny Rossin, Hart's Rossin BC. Flossing off that mental floss money. Go yeah. Ahead. So Johnny Hart made DC and he drew very quickly. While some cartoonists can take a full day to pencil and ink a strip, Hart preferred to expedite the process. Although writing jokes could resemble a marathon, executing them in panels was a sprint. Aided in some measure by the stylized spare style of BC, Hart could draw a week's worth of strips in a matter of hours. Dope. Wow, that's <laughs> cool. You can tell, too, by the humor in the, <laughs> in the BC strips. I think we're going to find out today. Whoa! Okay. Okay. Well, I'm not worried. Oh, Heathcliff really? Is funny you have a good here. one, too? Oh, yeah. Heathcliff's always a good one. By the way... I'll let you get to <laughs> whatever you're going to say <laughs> someday. But is this too bright? I feel like you're telling a ghost story. Do I look the same way? Yeah. Well, I can see <laughs> underneath your nose really well. <laughs> That's what I was trying to light. I'll, uh, I'll take it down a little bit. Can you push yeah, the minus I'll sign? Move, Sorry. I'll make movie magic. Maybe two or three. How do I look? Good. <laughs> Can you see that under my yeah. nostrils? Yes, it looks a lot sexier. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> some mood lighting under the bottom of your sexy, voluptuous nostrils. All right, so go ahead. <laughs> well, I, what I was going to say, I feel like it's just going to get you, make you go off. Okay. Isn't it? What do you think about Trump going to jail? <laughs> what do you think about that, huh? Uh, Let's do the I'm having show. a hard time keeping a track of it. I actually, he, I forgot what it was for even. It's He's always for, about to go to jail. It's for, I know, I know. So I, so it's like, I don't I know. Care. It's always, they're always like, oh, whoa, whoa. whoa. Now the, the walls have never been done before. Cornell, are the walls closing in on Trump? Yes, the walls are closing <laughs> in. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. I mean, it is interesting that he finally is the one that said he's afraid he's going to get arrested. So that indicates there's another level to it that, yes, like it seems more likely just because he said something. But it, but it's for it's for a payment he made to Stormy Daniels. Which is just like, <laughs> I know, right? Who gives a shit? Yeah. You can't get them on war crimes because they all... Oh, God damn it. You did set me off. <laughs> They're all guilty of war crimes. You're absolutely right. Uh. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Yep, except for that George W. He's a good man. <laughs> yeah, he's a good oh, man. Oh, man, that's going to get clipped. See? No that's what I think. That's it. what I think is... That was sarcasm. <laughs> of course it was. No, you can't get into it. Even Martin Luther King was like, you know what? You will be misinterpreted. Like, yeah. he pretty much said that. If you want to stand well, for Well, not if you so. listen to the whole quote. 
That's all he said. <laughs> that was his bi- whole speech, right? Uh, will be misinterpreted speech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you didn't even need to listen to the whole speech. That was just a dream he had. And then he woke <laughs> up and he's like, oh, no, you're not going to be misinterpreted. Then his sense came. Anyway, Martin Luther King, uh, war criminal. No. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, who cares? If they put, I mean, he's done so much and none of that matters, but paying Story Daniels off is, uh, you know, like at least we're getting Alex Jones on something good. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that he deserves. And he, and oh my God, that's interesting because however you feel about Alex Jones, I think it's undeniable. He, like, he couldn't have more done this to himself. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Like, he's so disruptive in court, he, like, forced the judge's hand to just make a summary judgment. It's, like, every step of the way, from these, from these... the thing he did in the beginning to, like, right. once it got to court. Right. I mean, I don't think he's it not helping what himself. he did in court. He's an idiot. <laughs> yeah. He very blatantly played up that Sandy Hook was, uh, you know, wasn't real. And the parents were all crisis actors because it got them more hits and made them sell more supplements. Yeah. Pretty blatant. <laughs> you know, once you get to court, there's no like, there's nothing he can do. He's just a, a dummy and he's drunk all the time. But nothing wrong with that. Well, free speech is a strong defense. So I, I don't know. He wouldn't probably have to pay a billion dollars <laughs> if he had done a better job in court. You know what I mean? Like he's, he owes more money than he's ever had. <laughs> I yeah. think. Yeah, well, he's he's um, claiming bankruptcy, sending all his money to his family and friends. I'll even say this, because I because the families aren't they ha- they had to sue. That's another. Th- Everyone had to do this to him. He's like gave them no choice. Yes, but if he had been remorseful, I don't know. Like he he was remorseful in a very manipulative way. Like in court, he would be remorseful and he would talk about how he's very sorry to the parents, but then he'll go, he would in the same day go broadcast and flippantly talk about everyone in the courtroom. Yeah. And flippancy is the whole thing. Right. 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 No. <laughs> yeah. You're absolutely right. <laughs> well, because he, he's unable to feel that emotion and actually be truly sorry for what he's done. He's unable to do that because if he had to face the consequences of what he's done, then he would be, uh, you would be drowned in his sea of bullshit. Um, Oh damn, you went off. Sorry. Sorry, Sorry, Alex. I'm a big fan. Um, that's not going to be a clip. Don't worry. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that. I'm a big fan. <clears throat> I don't know what came over me at that moment. Uh, but, 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 yeah, but it was still, he's not going to jail like Trump. He's just getting, the people had to sue him for doing something wrong. Other than that, he's not doing anything wrong, you know, according to the law. Like the law. Well, that's a tough, that's like a really tough case but generally i would i think that's i mean i free speech is important so it i don't know i don't know if you should go to jail yeah i mean that's defamation so yeah i guess that's a civil thing i don't know if i disagree with that yeah i mean it may it's enraging and he's outrageous but (laughs) you know (laughs) we i deal with people like that every day i don't know they just don't have a platform like that right right well that's why yeah it, but it's like it being weaponized or something that's pretty like i don't know leads to fascism a little bit what do you mean i don't know you're getting all these people on that on alex jones's page and with these super crazy talking points and getting them to do crazy stuff and then all of a sudden they're um more easily radicalized and and able to go along with ideas of like you know book bannings seem pretty mild comparatively and all these other crazy anti-abortion stuff and you know all these like super super hardline 
and stuff's going on in Idaho and stuff like that. It's just not as big of a deal anymore because what happened in Idaho? Well, there's like doctor. One hospital is like not <clears throat> delivering babies at their hospital anymore because so many physicians are leaving the state because of all their like, anti um, <clears throat> abortion laws that they're passing and stuff. See, the reason I don't want to get into this stuff is that I blame Democrats equally for this shit. We we women lost their right to choose when Democrats had the presidency and both uh, houses in Congress, the House of Representatives and well, that's because this is the Supreme Court. Uh, the no, the Republican Supreme Justices. Court left it up to, but it could, still could have been ratified into law. The reason the Supreme Court's decision made a difference is because it was a court decision to begin with. Right. They overturned a previous court decision. It's a lot harder to overturn a ratified law that's ratified by Congress. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like basically a court case went up to the Supreme Court in the 70s, I think. And that's what Roe v. Wade was. That was the law, was that case. Right. There was no, Congress never passed anything regarding that. Obama promised he would, and then he didn't. And then, I guess no one's ever really talked about it. They they tried to ratify it a year before the Supreme Court overturned it. But Dianne Feinstein and those two other infamous conservative Democrats, Democrats, Adam Schiff. No, name? Adam Schiff voted for it, but the uh, guy from Pennsylvania or whatever, the coal mine guy. I think so. Yeah, I don't know. One is. guy and one lady. Cinema was one that voted against it. Anyway, anyway, Joe I, Manchin. Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema, but I don't know. I don't really want to get into it because it, people love these people and they hate these people. But that the people aren't. We need to stick to the issues. That's the. Absolutely. That's the whole thing. Because the both sides you cannot, are shitty. Yeah. <laughs> and if you like someone, it blinds you to the horrible things they're doing, you know? Right. Right. And I'm trying to fight the temptation to like list off names, but it's going to piss people off. I really just don't want, I don't want to approach it from that way, you know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, I agree. I mean, I think a lot of them do piss me off. Um, you know, I'll, I'm not afraid to list names. Uh, AOC, um, Bob Marley, <laughs> um, Adam Schiff. <laughs> That's know. my rep. Oh, damn it. I keep giving away where I live every five seconds well, for some reason. This specific neighborhood of west dallas is he <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah he's in california i forgot <laughs> um dude i mean well i'm not afraid eh, whatever i don't know but i thought about when he what was it? he did something recently and i really wanted to like put flyers out about it because it was outrageous to me but i was afraid i'd be tracked by some he, he's he, be he, tracked. he was the on the intelligence committee yeah, he's it's scary, man. Our government scares me. <laughs> well, they're just and I'm afraid to even really speak out too much against it sometimes. Do you think if we got OK, well, then maybe I shouldn't ask this next question. Ask it. If we took money out of politics, would all of our problems be fixed? What does that mean? The lobbyists and all that stuff. They can't take any money. They can't buy and sell stocks. They get a fixed yeah, salary. Oh, yeah. That would not solve everything, but they definitely need to stop spouses and family members from trading individual stocks. They can still have a retirement fund that is operated Absolutely. by somebody else. Absolutely. Or a whatever, you know, yes. funds like that. But they cannot do stock stock trading and lobbyists. Don't you want them out? Or are you big? Yeah, but that's tough fan? because they're there's some good lobbyists. No, that goes back to free speech. They're being paid by companies to just bug, you know, <laughs> people and kind of nag people. And, and they're allowed to do that. But 
uh, and to offer them cushy jobs and stuff once they get out and yeah, all that that's, stuff. It's I'm all against, gray area shit. I'm against it, but it's it would have to be like a nuanced law and I you know, there would be a lot of little like you can't exchange money or you can't I yeah. my solution would be any negotiating with anyone by members of Congress has to take place on camera on C SPAN in that building. And anything outside of that is would be illegal and would be cheating and corruption and That's not bad. I think that would solve that because lobbyists you know, there's lobbyists for all kinds of things, including left wing causes. Yeah, but I know, including but it's, the bad guys, exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> no, but I mean, but it's mostly corporations trying to get deregulated and, and bad things like that, but it, right. it could be all kinds of things, so I don't know if you can ban... And it's really just talk talking to a member of Congress, which well, you're allowed to do. Well, obviously, money involved. Journalists are kind of doing the similar thing, so I don't know. There's obviously money involved. These These... Lobbyists are obviously paying people off. It's speaking engagements or yeah. promised jobs afterwards, you know, stuff like that. Whereas you go, all right, you you it's still it's still gotta be you've gotta keep in mind though, it still needs to be appealing to be in Congress somewhat. Not like you should be allowed to be corrupt, but it's like I don't know if you should be banned from get, getting good work afterwards or having no. speaking fees. <laughs> I don't know though. No, no. Afterwards, it you can have all me. the speaking fees you want. Oh, but during, that's a good point. Yeah. You can do whatever you want afterwards. I mean, maybe there's like a, I don't know exactly how you would stop the promising jobs afterwards, but that's still not as probably enticing as staying in Congress. You know, right. I, you're not going to push through crazy legislation just because you're going to get a job later. Maybe you would. I don't know. People I don't have, know. I think. They plan it out. They plan it out pretty well, yeah. I mean, I will push, try, I'll do my best to push through any legislature if uh, any lobbyists are listening right now. <laughs> I'll do my best. I can guarantee I'll work for you two hours a week. <laughs> pretty good offer. It's worth huh? a lot. <laughs> I know. How much you charge per hour? Um, ten thousand dollars. <laughs> I don't. Well, it's going to go to the highest lobbyist. Probably, so probably the lobbyist of the most, you know, fucked up shit. I also would ban political parties. Ban but, parties. But that's like rat. That's a radical wow. thing that I don't think is in any other country. So who knows what would happen? <laughs> but what do uh, you the, think would happen if we did that? You're only allowed to negotiate on camera and you're not associated with a party. I think everyone would actually try to do their job and they wouldn't be these party. When you're in one or the other political party, everyone else in that party is holding each other hostage. Right. You're absolutely right. Well, and they're so holding both allowed, sides you're, hostage. You're you holding know? the other side. You're holding each yeah. other. You're not allowed to speak out against the other members of the party. So. That's the biggest problem that I can see, really, the biggest root problem. And people are like, third party, but it's like, that'll just turn into the next second party. Right. Or it'll be a third party, but it'll be infiltrated by the same, you know, people. And, yeah, I think if a political yeah, parties... Be groups, no matter what, if you split it up, there'll be like a bunch of different parties, right? Don't you think it'll be like... Yeah, but you can only, but there's no behind the do doors and deal making ab amongst the party members. It's all got to be on C-SPAN. Right. So you can't talk to those people unless you're on camera. Yeah. Or make, I mean, you can't negotiate or, or make deals. And I know that's a hard to enforce, but a yeah. lot of things sound hard to enforce until it comes up. And then it's like, oh shit, you just said it. You just admitted you did with this exact law. I mean, it's things like that are actually easier to like. You can't deny someone housing for their race. That's hard to prove, and yet people yeah get prove it all the time. Got for that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, they don't let us white people buy a house. <laughs> it's so <Custom>. tough. <laughs> <laughs> No, it is fucked up. That is fucked up. I re- see articles about that shit all the time. Like a black family gets their house appraised for like, um, mm, kind of a dump. Here's thirty bucks, and then a white family comes in like seven point eight million. Well, I haven't heard that story. <laughs> that sounds extreme. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. no, I know. I was exaggerating for a more expensive for the black family. His appraisal is probably like <laughs> three 20. bucks. Yeah. Uh, no, but it, they a black family did have their house appraised and then got um, their white friends or something to come to and pose in it. Uh-huh, wow. And got it reappraised at a much higher rate. Yeah. So you can prove out that like you're making deals behind the scenes, even though you're not supposed to. I mean, I, that sounds like a vague law or hard to enforce and people would still commit fraud and commit crimes and shit. But that's a rule that I think would be great. And you're all you're only out for yourself and any alliance you have within Congress is all on C-SPAN. It's all for the public to see. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess I can't prevent you from having dinner outside of it, but there's strict rules about what you can talk about. You know, it's like insider trading. It's so easy to just accidentally say like, oh, yeah, this company's about to blow up. And it's like, oops, I just committed a crime. But. Those well, laws are important. Yeah, but it's also still easy to do insider trading if you're working in Congress or your spouse. Yeah. Well, it's and, they, and get away with it. Yeah, but if you ban your, That's why. you or your spouse from doing it at all, then that ta- that yes. helps more. <laughs> no, that'll help a lot more. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No individual stock sales. L dog corn dog. 2024 <laughs> fight the power. I think you, I think we fixed a lot of the problems in our government. Also more wars. Yeah. We're never at war. We need to be at war more. <laughs> I just feel bad for all those companies that make the weapons and the defense contractors. Like who's helping them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if you can do like a bailout. They aren't asking for one necessarily, but maybe a preemptive one just in case for Raytheon and uh, <laughs> and um, and that's our number one issue. And then Raytheon's after, the, after we're done with that, we'll do all the shit Logan talked about. <laughs> Raytheon's the best. That name is so evil sounding. Right. Like Lockheed Martin sounds kind of cool. Like, oh, it's like, it makes me think of jets and pilots and, but it's like Raytheon. Yeah. <laughs> we make human poison. Lockheed Martin. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Raytheon sounds like a serpent of some kind. Yeah. Um, and Lockheed Martin sounds like a gun safe. Right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, should we read our comments? Boeing. Let's do it. I stole a Cornell joke there. Is that a me joke? Boeing? Boron. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a joke I made in high school. Yeah. Wow, it's a good time. <laughs> it's perfect timing because we're 55 minutes in. Our, we're almost done with our colonoscopy back here. It's deep. <laughs> it's Smiles very deep. deep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Polyp free, too, baby. But there's blinking lights. <laughs> All right. Champion goes first. Heathcliff. Oh, baby. Defending his title. Heathcliff is defending his title. And I could not be happier with Heathcliff. See, Heathcliff is the jelly belly of comic strips. There's a bunch of other comic strips. And Heathcliff sits in a world of its own. So today's Heathcliff. So this shit makes you burp, dude. <laughs> Whoa, <Lord>. nice. <laughs> oh, that's been the problem. You've been holding in that one burp this whole time because you've been burping into your hand a little bit the whole the whole episode. But you, now you can finally let it out. But you can't put it all on the bang because you, the one outlier, I drank a bang too. I didn't drink 
Mineragua, maybe the spiciest mineral water of them all. Is vodka. <laughs> Mineragua does have the hardest bubbles out of all Hard seltzers. Bubbles. And I appreciate it. I just feel like I should point that out. I like a hard. I don't. LaCroix is a little too soft on the seltzer. New band name? Hard Bubbles? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Unless you're talking about Michael Jackson's monkey. Hello. <laughs> All right. Okay. So this Heathcliff. Um, makes no sense. Okay. So. There's two people looking into a gym. And and the guy says, is saying to the woman, I'm going to read that part first in this one. Okay. okay. He's they're looking into the window of a gym standing right in front of it. The gym is called. Well, all right. So the guy says to the woman, <laughs> they're popping up all over, right? And their sign on the gym, there's two signs that say Lincoln Gym. And inside the gym, there's two Abraham Lincoln looking guys in white shirts and shorts running on treadmills. One Abraham Lincoln guy sitting on a chair, lifting weights above his head like this. And then Heathcliff with the Abraham Lincoln hat and beard. Doing bicep curls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's it. What? <laughs> it's crazy. It makes no sense. Hmm. That's why I thought it was funny. Let's see what BC has to offer. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this one is BC takes place in ancient times. Uh, but in this one, it's just two animals. It's a bird and a worm, or maybe it's a snake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Talking. And uh, the bird's kind of crazy looking. Mm-hmm. Because it's, you know, Stone Age times. <laughs> and he goes, Rock, spring is here. Want to see my mating dance? And the snake goes, sure. And the bird dances around like crazy. The words used to describe his sounds he's making are warble, whoop, warp, whoop, wamp. <laughs> okay. He's jumping around. He has no wings. He just has feet. He looks like an emu or something. And uh, the final panel, uh, the snake says, that reminds me, aren't y'all due for an extinction any day now? <laughs> the dodo bird, huh? All right. Sick burn by the snake, in my opinion. Sick burn by the snake. Um, I guess we'll go with BC as the winner there. I'll yeah. give it to you. But I mean, this Heathcliff is pretty crazy. Look at this. <laughs> it makes no sense. Lincoln Jim. Did you Google Lincoln Jim? Maybe that's a thing. I don't know. But Heathcliff looking like Abraham Lincoln, too, makes no sense. It's not a it's not a uh, chain that I've ever heard of. When I tried to pull up Heathcliff a few weeks ago, one of the comics that I saw this was the whole thing. It was one panel. It was a giant robot terrorizing a town, and Heathcliff just saying, "I think the meat monster or the meat machine is broken." That was it. <laughs> I think the meat really robot funny. is broken. Or so I was like, "What?" That sounds really funny. That sounds really funny. I think it's serialized. No, it's not. No, there. Well, that one was there. Was, they like built a meat robot. It still made no sense. But no, I guarantee <laughs> you. They, I guarantee you, it's not. No, they did. They built a meat robot in a previous one to the one I just said. Are you sure you can yeah. prove that? Yeah. You well, want me to? I'd like to see Live. proof. Everyone could use a meat robot. Something gone wrong with the meat robot. Oh, my God. You need the deli made it? That's the last of the ham gum. What is going on with Heathcliff? <laughs> this is my favorite strip There's ever. There's a meat robot. They're... 
that couldn't make less sense. The meat robot and Heathcliff were both flying by bubbles they blew with a ham gum. Ham gum is from Futurama, too. Even dogs love the meat robot. The meat robot was once just a dream. Okay, are we getting closer to the building of meat robot? No, then he disappears. Wow. But see, I told you at least it referenced it more than once. And maybe I, that's mem- not serious. Yeah, I don't know if it's. I mean, there was like a parade, and then something went wrong. That was clearly the same scene. On two different days. There was a parade. Oh, that was a parade when he went wrong? When he was blowing fire on people? It was the same scene. He was doing a parade, and then he was walking the other direction, breathing fire. Mm. But it does not make sense. <laughs> we got to get to the bottom of this meat robot. There's also Let's a- not. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a garbage gorilla I've seen. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I'd be. the jungle, baby. I'm glad I beat Heathcliff then. All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening to that riveting episode from me, the meat robot, and Logan. And, and of Carl. course, big sea dog, Carl Meister. From us to you, just remember, keep listening. Keep laughing. And, and keep, keep stripping. stripping.